Hello everyone, this is Dr. Hassa Al-Fadl, the course coordinator of Accounting 112. In this video, I'm going to continue explaining Chapter 3, Part 2. Please pay attention throughout this chapter. The third learning objective is to prepare and explain adjusting entries for deferral of revenues. If you remember in Chapter 2, we talked about the unearned revenue. And we said that unearned revenue means that we receive the cash before providing the service. So if we receive the cash but the service is not completed yet, then we are going to record it as an unearned revenue. And remember, unearned revenue is a liability. Why it's a liability? Because we receive the cash but now we have a liability to complete the service first and then record it as a revenue. Remember, unearned revenue is a liability. Let's see this example of adjusting entry for unearned revenues. Now fast forward, they have a client or a customer that he pays $3,000 for a service that will be completed within 60 days in advance, covering the period from the 27th of December till the 24th of February. So now, a customer pay us 3000 in advance to complete for him a service which will take 60 days to be completed. Now, how we use, we use to record the entry? Since we receive the cash in advance, so our cash is going to increase. But if I ask you, did we complete the service? No, we did not complete the service because we need 60 days to complete the service. So in this case, I'm not gonna say cash to revenue. I'm going to say cash to unearned consulting revenue. And why cash is increasing? Because I received the cash in advance and the cash is increasing on the debit side. That's why in my journal entry, I'm going to record it the first line. And unearned revenue is on the credit side because my liability is increasing. Okay, let's move now to step two. As you remember in the previous slide, we recorded the entry as cash to unearned revenue. Why did we record cash to unearned revenue? Because we received the cash from the, uh, from the customer and we did not perform the service yet. That's why we record it as an unearned revenue. Now we know that the customer paid us 3,000 on the 27th of December, which is the start date of the service. And the service will be ended on the 24th of February 2020 next year which means that we need 60 days to complete the full service so when we are going to recognize the revenue it's supposed to be recognized by the end of the service when the service is completed but now I have a problem we started the service on the 27th of December 2019 and we will finish it next year. We have a problem. We have in the, in the middle, we have ending of a year. Between the start date and the end date of the service, I have a problem. I have the end of a year, 31st of December 2019, which is end of a year. So the company should record all of their revenues. I know that we should record the revenue when the service is completed, but here I have another case. I have the end of a year in between the service. So what should I do? I'm going to recognize the revenue from 27th December till 31st of December because we start working on the service from 27th until 31st of December. So basically we've been working here for how long? We work five days because from 27th of December till 31st of December is five days. So we completed five days of work. So now I can record my revenue. It's not necessarily you need to wait until the service is completed. 
whenever you complete the service, you need to record it. So I'm going to record uh, the revenue only of five days. I cannot record the revenue of the 60 days, the full 60 days, because I did not complete all of the service. I only complete from 27 till 31st, five days. Okay, how much is the revenue? Of course, I'm not going to record 3,000 as a revenue. I'm not going to record 3,000 as a revenue. I'm going to record less. I'm only going to record for five days. So how I'm going to calculate it? I'm going to take five days divided by 60 days, which is the total days of service, multiply by 3,000, which is the cash that is received from the customer. How much is my revenue? 250. So I work for five days, so my revenue is 250. So now, if I want to prepare the adjusting entry, what will increase and what will decrease? Of course, my consulting revenue will increase in the credit side and my unearned revenue will decrease on the debit side. Why is my unearned revenue decreasing? Because I completed five days. So my liability is decreasing. Because I complete, I did not complete all of the service, of course, I only complete five days. Since I work on the service, it means my unearned revenue, my liability is decreasing. Okay, let's understand it more by seeing the T account. Let's go to step three. In step three, as you can see, we have unearned revenue and the unearned revenue we have 3,000 on the credit side. Why we have 3,000 on the credit side as shown here in the, in the T account? Because in step one, we received the cash, but we did not complete the service and we recorded the unearned revenue on the credit side, 3,000. But now we complete five days out of the 60 days. So we, uh, we record the revenue of 250. So now I need to decrease my unearned consulting revenue. Why I need to decrease my unearned? Because from the 3,000, I worked for, I, I earned 250. So now how much is my balance as an unearned consulting revenue? So 3,000 minus 250 will give me 2,750. And for the revenue, I'm going to record 250 on the credit side. And as you know, unearned consulting revenue or unearned revenue it's a liability so where we record the liability we record the liability on the balance sheet okay what about the consulting revenue because it's a revenue and we know that income statement includes all of the revenues and expenses so the revenue should be recorded in the income statement now the most important part of the chapter is how to record the adjusting entry How I'm going to record the adjusting entry of the 250? Now, as I said, because I complete a work of five days, which is equal to 250, I'm going to reduce my unearned revenue. Unearned revenue, it's a liability, but if it's going to decrease, it's going to decrease on the debit side. So I'm going to say unearned revenue to revenue. Why my, my unearned revenue is on the debit side? Because my liability is decreasing. Why my liability is decreasing? Because I completed five days work. So my liability is going down. Why my revenue is increasing on the credit side? Because I've worked and I completed only five days so I can record it as a revenue. So remember here, you don't need to wait until the service to be completed then you have to record it as a revenue if you complete two days then you can record the revenue of two days if you complete 10 days then you can record the revenue of 10 days whenever the service is completed even if it's half third two-third of the work is completed you can record it okay so this is what we call as unearned revenue adjusting entries now let's move to the fourth learning objective, which is to prepare and explain adjusting entries for accrued expenses. 
So what do we mean by accrued expenses, which is the cost anchored in a period that are both unpaid and unrecorded? This is very important. Pay attention here. Okay, now we are going to see an example of adjusting for accrued salaries. We know that, for example, and I've been saying this in chapter one and chapter two, that salaries are expenses that we are going to pay them in, in a regular basis. So here they say fast forward, this is the company, and they pay their employees $70 per day. So every day the employee will work, we are going to pay him 60 dollars and basically the employees are working five days a week so the employee employees usually they they work let's say for example from monday till friday so monday tuesday wednesday thursday and friday so they work five days and each day we are going to pay them 70. so 70 multiplied by 5, it means in total, every every week, I'm going to pay them $350. But usually, the salaries are going to be paid every two weeks on a Friday. Every two weeks, I'm going to pay the employee. So if you can see here, if you can see here in December 2019, this is the calendar. So 1st of December, Till the 5th of December, this is week 1, okay? And then from 8th of December till the 12th of December, this is week 2. And usually when we are going to pay them, every two weeks we pay them their salary. Every two weeks the salary is paid. So when is the first salary that I'm going to pay them? On the 12th of December. Every Friday, every two weeks of each Friday, I'm going to pay them. So on the 12th of December, Friday, I'm going to pay them the salary. Then on 15th of December till 19th of December, this is week one. Then from 22 of December till 26th of December, this is week two. And I'm going to pay them on 26th of December on Friday. So as I said, every two weeks of, on a Friday, I'm going to pay them. Now, if we start on, again, 29th on Monday, 29th of December, till 31st of December is only three days. Remember here, I have a problem. What is my problem exactly? The last week of December, is only three days. This employee work for three days. They work on 29, they work on 30, and they work on 31st. But should I pay them on 31st of December? No, I cannot pay them because we said every two weeks we have to pay them. So when I should pay them? I should pay them. I shouldn't pay them on 31st of December. I have to pay them on 9th of January 2020. But now I have a problem. I have 31st of December here, 2019. And 31st of December, it means end of a year. If it's end of a year, I have a problem. Because I have end of a year, I need to record all of my expenses. Even though that I did not pay the salaries yet, but I have to record it. I know that on 31st of December, I'm not going to record the salary. I didn't, I'm not going to pay the salary. On 31st of December, I'm not going to pay the salary. But this is end of a year. I have to record it even though I did not pay it yet. So how am I going to record it? So you can see here, 31st of December is end of a year. We need to record it, even though the salary is not yet paid. I know that I need to pay them on the 9th of January, but this is end of a year. I have to record my expenses, even though that I did not pay them yet. So I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to calculate 10 days, because in December, I just did employee work on 29, on 30, on 31st. How many days they've been working? Three days. So I'm going to record the expenses for three days. 
So I'm going to say, okay, I have three days and I'm going to multiply by 70. Why 70? Because we said that every day we have to pay them $70. So I'm going to record 70 multiplied by 3 and it's 210. So my expenses over three days is 210. So my salary's expense is 210. But did I pay the salary? No, I did not pay it. But I have to record it. Why? Because it's the end of a year. So how am I going to record the adjusting entry? I'm going to say salary's expense to salary's payable. Why do I have salary's expense and salary's payable? Salary's expense because my expenses are increasing. And why did I record it as a salary's payable? Because I did not pay it yet, but I will be paying it on the 9th. But I have to record it. So remember, if you have salary and you are adjusting, you always say salary's expense to salary's payable. And you are only going to record how many days that the employee worked, but they did not pay it, so you are going to multiply. So here, 3 multiplied by the salary per day. So remember, the adjusting entries is salary's expense to salary's payable. To understand it more, let's see the T account. So now if we can see the T account here, we have salaries payable. Salaries payable is a liability. And why I recorded here liability? Because now me as a company, I have a liability. I record the 210 as a salaries expense, but I did not pay it yet. So that's why I need to record it as a salaries payable because I have a liability to pay them. So now my balance of my salary is payable is 210. And because salary is payable, it's an, a liability. So where I go record the liability, I'm going to record the liability on the balance sheet. What about salary's expense? Where I'm going to record the salary's expense? I'm going to record the salary's in expense in the income statement because expenses should be recorded in the income statement. Okay, so now we reach to 9th of January 2020. We reach to the day of payment. Okay, so how we are going to record the date of the, the entry of the date of payment? So now the company is going on the 9th of January 2020. It's a Friday and they need to pay the employees their salary. So if the company is going to pay salary, what will happen to their cash? Their cash is going to decrease. The cash is going to decrease. Why? Because the company is going to pay the salary. Okay. Then we can see here in the adjusting or the, in the entry, we have salaries payable and salaries expense. From where I got the salaries payable, if you remember in the previous slide where we recorded salaries expense to salaries payable because we already record the expenses in 2019 I cannot record it here again so I record it there as a liability now I need to close my salaries payable I need to close my liability here how much was my liability in the previous slide it was 210 because we have three days and we multiply them by 70 we record them in 2019 but we did not pay them so that's why we record them as salaries payable but now i'm going to pay all of the money to the employees so i need to close my liability of those three days because i'm going to pay it then i record here again salaries expense and here it's written salaries expense seven multiplied by 70. what do i mean by seven because in january the employee worked for seven days, okay? In December, the employee worked for three days. But in January, the employees worked for seven days. How did I calculate seven days or how did I count seven days? If you go to the January calendar, you will see that it's highlighted. So the employees work on 1st of January, 2nd of January, 5th of January, 6th of January, 7th of January, 8th of January, and 9th of January. 
So the employees work seven days in January and three days in December. So that's why I say salaries expense seven multiplied by 70 will give me 490. 490 plus 210, it means that we pay in total 700 cash. So my expenses is going to increase, my liability is going to decrease, and my cash is going to decrease as well. This is very important. Now let's move on with the fourth uh, learning objective, which is to prepare and explain the adjusting in entries for accrued revenues. So what do you mean by accrued revenues? Accrued revenues are revenues earned in a period that are both unrecorded and not yet received in cash or other assets. Let's see here an example to understand what this accrued revenue means. Okay, now let's see the example of adjusting for accrued services revenue. Just remember here that the dates are important, so pay attention. So on December 12, 2019, fast forward, they agree to render consulting service. What does render mean? It means to provide consulting service under a 30-day fixed fees contract for 2700 which means that per day, $90. All services are to be completed by 10th of January 2020 when the client will pay in full. So let us now break down this transaction into pieces. So now, the company fast forward will start providing the service on the 12th of December 2019 and to complete the service they need 30 days so they're going to start the service on 12th of December they're going to complete it next year on the 10th of January 2020 and overall the process will take them 30 days to complete the service now again just pay attention look at those two dates we have 12th of December 2019 and we're going to end it the service on the 10th January 2020 next year so if the service is between two year we have a problem remember what is our problem yes which is the end of a year we have end of a year in between my question here before moving to the end of the year point did the, comp did the client pay me money to the company? Did the client pay the money to the company? No. We did not receive the money from the customer yet. We are expecting the customer to pay us on 10th of January 2020. The customer will pay me in full when the service is completed. I did not receive any cash from the customer. Uh, no cash is received. Okay. So now if I have end of a year in between the service, so what do I need to do? Because I'm ending a year, I have to record all of my revenue, right? I have to record all of my revenue. So now from 12th of December till 31st of December, how many days we've been working before end of a year? We start working on 12th of December, and then we have 31st of December end of the year. I need to record my revenue, even though that I did not uh, record, uh, even though that I did not complete the full service. But if I work for like five or ten days, I have to record. Okay, it's not necessarily I need to wait until the service to be completed. Whenever I complete half of the service, two third of the service, I can record the the revenue. So now from the 12th of December to the 31st of December, it means 20 days of work is completed. 20 days of work is completed. Okay. So now because 20 days is completed, I can record the revenue only for the 20 days. So how I'm going to record here the revenue? I'm going to say that, okay, I completed 20 days out of the 30 days. Then I multiply it with 90. 
From where did I get the 90? Because they told me per day, per day is going to be, a, the revenue will be earned 90 per day. So I'm going to say 20 multiplied by 90 is going to give me 1,800. So now how I'm going to record the entry? So the service is completed. But did I receive cash? No. Because I did not receive cash, but I'm expecting the customer to pay me the cash on the 10th of January 2020. Then I'm going to say account receivable 1800 and consulting revenue 1800. So now I recognize the revenue. Why did I record here a revenue? Because 20 days of the work is completed. So I can record 20 days as a revenue. Yes, I did not finish all of the service, but I complete, let's say, half of the service. More than half of the service is completed, so I can record it. But when I record it, I'm not going to record 2,700. I'm going to record only 1,800 because only 20 days is completed. Why account receivable is increasing on the debit? Because I did not receive the cash from this, uh, the customer yet. But I'm expecting to receive it at the end of the service period. So let's see now the T account to understand it more. So we have here account receivable and the account receivable is increasing on the debit side. Okay. And the total or the balance will be 1,800 because account receivable, it's an asset. So I'm going to record it on the, of course, balance sheet and consulting revenue also increases on the credit side by 1,800. So, and I'm going to record the revenue in the income statement because as you remember that income statement includes two items, revenues and expenses. So any revenues, I'm going to record them in the income statement and the total will be 7,820. Okay, now let's move on with the second transaction. So now what happened basically on 10th, of January. Now we reach to the end of, of what? Of the service. We said that we started the service on the 27th of, um, 20, or 12th of December, 2019. And we're going to end the service on the 10th of January. Now we reach 10th of January and fast forward, complete its obligations and liability under the consulting contract. And now we are, the client was built. We built the client. We told them now we complete the service. Please pay us 2,700. And the customer did. The, he pay us 2,700. So now me as a company, I complete my services. And now I, build, I, I send a bill to the customer and the customer pay me 2,700. So now me as a company, I receive 2,700. So my... My, what happened to my uh, cash? My cash, of course, is going to increase because I receive money. So my cash is going to increase. Now, we are going to move on with um, the learning objective number five, which is to explain and prepare an adjusted trial balance. We already learned how to prepare the trial balance in chapter two, at the end of chapter two. If you don't remember it, please go and check the video of chapter two, the last part of the chapter. We learned how to prepare a trial balance. And I told you earlier that the trial balance, it's not a financial statement, but it's a statement that we prepare that will help us to uh, prepare then the, um, what we call it the financial statement, but it's not part of the financial statement. And if you remember, we said that when we are going to prepare the trial balance, we have three columns. The first column will be the title of the or the account title. Then the second will be the debit column and then the credit column. And we usually when we prepare the trial balance, we need to start with all of the asset accounts, then the liability, then the equity, which means in the equity, we need to put the capital um, investments or uh, capital withdrawals revenue and expenses. So all of these should be in order. And this is unadjusted trial balance because as you can remember now, 
if you can remember now here in this um, in this chapter we learn how to prepare the adjusting entries okay so we already see this is the unadjusted trial balance and now this is the adjustment from where I put the adjustment now if you can see now in line 7 where is the supply the supply was 9720 but if you remember in chapter 3 part 1 we said that if we use the supplies we need to adjust and we did the adjustment here and the adjustment was 1050 okay so in this column I'm going to put all of the adjusting entries that I did in this chapter then I will be ready to prepare the adjusted trial balance okay the adjusted trial balance it means that I have to prepare the trial balance if I did some adjustment if I used for example my insurance I need to adjust if I use my supplies I need to adjust if I completed half of my service, I need to adjust the revenue and recognize it. So if we did any adjustment throughout the year or throughout the months, I need to, pre to put the adjustments inside this table and then I need to prepare the adjusted trial balance because the amount of each account will be different after adjustment. Okay, so now to prepare the adjusting trial balance, as I said earlier, after like um, preparing the adjusting uh, entries, you need to enter all of your adjusting entries in this table and then you are going to be able to prepare the adjusted trial balance. So if we start here with the first example, we have here the cash and the unadjusted trial balance is 4,350 and we have no adjustment during the month or the year. So it means that since there is no changes, I'm going to record the cash as 4,350 the same in the adjusted trial balance. So if the account has no adjustment entries, it means that you are going to copy the same number in the adjusted trial balance. Now let's see another example. For the account receivable, in the unadjusted trial balance, I have nothing. There is no number in the unadjusted trial balance for the account receivable. But when we did some adjustment, we have 1,800 uh, as adjusted entry in the debit side. It means that I have to record the 1,800 now on the adjusted trial balance. So if you have nothing in the unadjusted trial balance but you have an adjustment, then you are going to take the number. So the here 1,800 is on the debit side. So you need to move or copy this number in the adjusted trial balance the same and in the debit side as well. Now, if we take another example of, uh, so you need to do for each and every account, but here I'm just giving you an example. So now if we take the prepaid insurance, now we know that the prepaid insurance, it's an asset. So the normal balance of the prepaid insurance should be on the debit side. So and under the unadjusted trial balance, we have 2,400 in the debit side. But now, do we have any adjustments? If we look at the adjustment table, Yes, we have an adjustment of 100. Now, how much should I record on the adjusted trial balance? Now, you need to think. Now, prepaid insurance, it's an asset. And the asset, normal balance is debit. So, I have 2,400 as a debit. And I have the adjustment 100 on the credit. So, if I have debit on the unadjusted and credit on the unadjustment adjusted entry so 2400 minus 100 why is minus here why should I do minus because one account is on the debit side the unadjusted and the adjustment is on the credit side so I'm going to deduct so the total will be so the total will be in the adjusted entry 2300 so now let's move on with another example, which is the salaries expense. The salaries expense, we know that the normal balance of the expenses are a debit. And we have here on the unadjusted trial balance, um, a balance of 1,400 on the debit side. Do we have any adjustment? Yes, I do have adjustment here by 210 and also on the debit side. Now if I have debit, debit, and the normal balance of the salaries expenses debit, then it means that I have to add. 
So how much I'm going to report in my adjusted trial balance? 1,610. Why 1,610? Because I added 1,400 plus 210. Why did I add them? Because both of the balance are on the debit side and the normal balance of the expense is debit. So if I have debit and the adjustment is in debit, then I'm going to add. Now let's see here and also for example, if I have the normal balance is credit and the adjustment is in a credit, then also I'm going to add. Now let's see another example here, which is unearned consulting revenue. The unearned uh, revenue, it's a liability, so the normal balance will be on the credit side. So under the unadjusted trial balance, I have 3,000 on the credit side. Do I have any adjustment? Yes, I do have an adjustment, but the adjustment is on the debit side. So now, should I add or deduct? Now, what's the normal balance of the unearned revenue? Credit. The normal balance of unearned revenue is credit, and the adjustment is on the debit. So if I have one on the credit, one on the debit, what I'm going to do? I'm going to deduct. So how much I have to report on the uh, adjusted trial balance? I'm going to record 2,750. So this is will be on the credit side. Why on the credit side? Because this is unearned revenue and unearned revenue is the liability and the liability should be recorded on the credit side. Okay. And then I need to take, if I, you have to go account by account until you have the total debit should be equal to the total credit. Okay. This is the end of chapter three.